On 7 Up Front tonight, a return visit from our very first guest on the Up Front segment, longtime University of Michigan broadcaster, former player, Jim Brandstatter. Brandy, welcome back. You know, you made some news at the start of the season announcing that this year would be your last calling games of the Wolverines. Why the decision now? Well, both Dan Deardorff and I, who started uh, doing the games eight years ago when Dan retired from CBS, Dan was only going to work three years. And we both talked and said, let's go out together. Well, we are our, in our eighth year together. And last January, we both looked at each other and said, you want to go one more year? You were in the last year of our deal. And he looked at me and says, I'll get back to you in a month. Think about it. And about a week later, he called and said, what are we kidding each other? Let's go out now. Let's go out this year. And uh, we both decided about February, March that we were going to retire. And really, it's time. Uh, let the younger guys go at it. We've had a great career, but let the younger guys take over. Well, you've certainly had that great career, as you mentioned. Now, your history with the university goes back to the late 60s with your playing days under Bo Schembechler, player, alum, broadcaster. Briefly give me a couple of the very best moments of your long association with the school. I, I wish I could do it in just a couple of moments, Dave, but it's so many. Uh, I mean, my relationship with Bo Schembechler is obviously a highlight. The fact that I played on a team in 1969 that beat Ohio State, kind of the watershed game of Michigan football that brought Michigan football to the forefront of collegiate football uh, back in the mid-60s. And that game was a watershed game for us. And to be part of that team was great. And to watch the great players like Anthony Carter and Desmond Howard and and those guys play and get to call their games and Denard Robinson go to some of the great venues across this country. We were just in Nebraska at Memorial Stadium. It's an unbelievable place. South Bend, the shoe, the horseshoe in Columbus, Spartan Stadium. And of course, the big house has been my office for 43 years. It just does not get any better than that. And it, there are more memories than that, but that's all we got time for right now. Yeah, well, it's been a fantastic run, no doubt. Now, you've been very vocal in your support of Bo after the allegations from his stepson, Matt, and also some former players who claim Bo didn't do enough to stop Dr. Robert Anderson's abuse of student athletes and others. Clearly, it's a difficult time for the victims and the university community. But I wanted you to speak to that as a former player in the program. Well, there are two issues, really. And again, the abuse by Dr. Anderson, that alleged abuse, I have no issues with those people who are claiming that abuse. Uh, the only issue I have is with those people who claim Bo knew that this abuse was going on and let it continue. That's the only issue I have. Bo Schembechler, the man I knew, the man that I have a letter, 162 former players and staff signed, if he knew criminal sexual abuse was going on to his players, to his people, he would have never let that stand. He would have put a stop to it immediately. So to suggest that he knew and let it continue, to me, is wrong. I have all the sympathy in the world for those people who feel they were sexually abused. That's abhorrent behavior, and they have every right to seek justice in any way they can. And I wish them well in that. But my issue is solely the fact that they're claiming Bo Schembechler knew this was going on and let it continue. And my contention is that is not true. All right, let's talk for a moment about this year's team. Off to a 6-0 and start, many expecting a showdown of unbeatens when the annual <laughs> battle for the Paul Bunyan Trophy takes place in East Lansing in three weeks. That would be fun. It would be fun, but Davey Lou, you're a former sports guy. <laughs> you don't get ahead of yourself. I mean, Michigan's got to beat Northwestern. Yeah. Michigan State's got to beat Indiana before you get to that October 30th date. So let's back off a little bit and take care of business first. Maybe that's the old coach in me talking. But, yeah, both teams are playing extremely well. Michigan has had, I think, a rebirth. I think that their attitude, their intensity, and their energy has been the huge difference. And you only have to look at one incident. When they were on the field at Wisconsin during jump around, and they were jumping around and having the time of their lives, and it was almost like the Wisconsin players were going, hey, what are you guys doing that for? We're, that's supposed to be us. They basically took over the stadium. And I think that that's been the big difference with this team. And great respect for Mel Tucker and the Spartans and what they've done so far this year. Unbelievable. I mean, to think that they've got a Heisman Trophy candidate in their backfield. Uh, I'll tell you what, their turnaround uh, that Mel Tucker has done in East Lansing has been nothing short of remarkable. And as they get into the meat of their season now and play these tougher teams, uh, I think a lot of things are going to shake out in the Big Ten. 
Penn State, Michigan State, Michigan, Ohio State, they're all going to be start playing each other. And uh, somebody's going to stub their toe along the way. But Michigan State has been, I think, in my judgment, the surprise team of the entire Big Ten, if not the country this year. Yeah, it's been a fantastic start. Enjoy the bye week this week because it's going to be quite a road to the uh, end of the season. Brandy, as always, we thank you for your time. Thanks for the years of service. And yeah, uh, we're going to look forward to uh, the broadcast for the remainder of this season. Thank you, David. Great to be with you. All right. Talk again soon. Jim Brandstetter on 7 Up Front joining us tonight. Glenda?